good morning uh, today we are going to discuss about the uh, other models of uh, alternative theories of firm such as williamson's model and maris model and other things so uh, let me uh, actually talk about the uh, williamson uh, the the uh, william j bomol's uh, sales revenue maximization which we will discuss later uh, first of all the williamson's model is actually a kind of a behavioral model or a kind of a managerial model one is about the uh, it's a mix of a managerial model and uh, oliver e williamson mentioned his concept of managerial discretion in his article managerial discretion of business behavior which was published in american economic review in 1963 and the theory argue that the managers or manager of a firm deals with the discretionary policy which maximizes their own utility rather than those of maximizing the profit of the firm so uh, this is actually the kind of understanding of uh, who maximizes what in that sense so traditionally what we believed is that or the marginalism believed is that uh, the profit maximization is the sole motive of the firm or the owner and the firm is nothing but the owner of the firm but in modern terms what you are actually deviating it from is the modern uh, firms owners are not necessarily the managers of the firm managers and owners are different but sometimes managers are actually more powerful than the owners why because even if it is actually the owners are the owner of the firm but most of the things are actually being managed by this particular set of people and therefore they, they can actually flaunt we have already seen in the previous couple of lectures that uh, about the importance of uh, a controlling manager the principal agent mode uh, issues and uh, the information asymmetry and how this is basically plays a, a crucial role in making uh, the role of manager in that sense a very very uh, important one in that so, so the theory argue that managers of a firm deals with the discretionary policy which maximizes their own utility rather than those maximizing the profit of the firm in that sense so this is the most important uh, idea of this particular model which he was trying to advance of course this is a very very important work which he had had and later uh, most uh, i mean he even uh, backed his nobel prize one of his uh, main contribution being considered as this particular one but uh, of course we know that his uh, contribution to the transaction cost economics uh, uh, is a very different uh, one altogether and of course you can see that there is a an increasing connect between these two aspect in that sense when it comes uh, from his uh, or when you look into the aspect of managerial or managerial behavior uh, especially to oh, make the capital uh, capitalist interest etc so the utility is maximized through expen expense preference through which a slack payment discretionary investment and emoluments are increased in that sense so thus the utility maximizing function of the manager is a function of a staff expenditure that is s and emoluments m and a discretionary investment in that society etc so these are actually the determinants of basically a maximization function of a manager in that sense so uh, for example if i have more staff then i feel very happy and my utility may be you know uh, better so i may be working very hard i will make them work hard etc so these are actually the kind of sentimentality of the managers which in fact makes the uh, firms move ahead or backward in that so, so uh, these concepts of uh, behavior kind or managers behavior kind is very very crucial and therefore you have u is equal to f of sm id in that sense now uh, once you have this thing then uh, we can easily basic relation can be set and uh, the model proposed by williamson is to be viewed uh, considering certain basic relations such as the assumption of the downward slope in demand curve defines by the firm that is x is equal to way of um, f of uh, p s and epsilon and that's so your p is actually the price and s is the staff expenditure and epsilon is demand shift parameter and that's so now when you have a cos c which is also the function of output which is on the c is a function of uh, x in that sense so x is your output in that sense so then what you can have is actually the cost which is the function of the output uh, then again actual profit uh, is uh, what you uh, notated as the pi and pi is actually nothing but the revenue minus cost 
minus the staff expenditure in that sense. So now uh, earlier what you see is the revenue minus cost and that cost includes the cost of manager but it is actually the staff expenditures which is also made by it may be normally additionally made by and uh, a reported profit is actually nothing but the pi by uh, pi r which is actually the r minus c minus s minus m in that sense now uh, you also have emoluments in that so, so that you, when you reduce emoluments from the real world what you get is actually a reported profit and then again you get a discretionary investment and that portion portion is nothing but the it which is equal to the profit or uh, the reported profit minus the uh, pi zero that is uh, pi zero minus t in that sense so a discretionary profit is whether you can go for a tax or whether you can go for something other than that uh, you know, uh, which is all gives a kind of the level of profit which is discretionary. So discretionary profit is also very, very crucial and you have a discretionary investment also in that sense. So again, when you have a discretionary profit, that is nothing but the, the, the actual profit minus uh, the uh, uh, pi zero minus t in that sense. So uh, when you have all this in place, then manager in emolument is assumed to be zero. That is n is equal to zero. This implies that your reported profit is equal to the actual profit. That's your utility function is also the following. That is uh, u is equal to f of s and id. In that sense, your reported profit is equal to the actual profit. The utility function can be rewritten as u is equal to f of s pi d that's it. so your discretionary profit now all this is actually changes for the graphical representation of the equilibrium it requires a the managerial indifference curve b the curve showing relationship between the staff expenditure and discretionary profit and that's it so if you look into that aspect simplified model as the following like when you have actually the product case when your pi is being maximized, but at the same time you are not actually being maximized. What you are maximizing is actually expenditure maximization is actually in this case. Whereas a slight modified version, which we will see in a, basically that is preceded more preceding model than this thing, which is called the sales revenue maximization case of Fubomo, which we will eventually discuss. So the equilibrium of a firm is determined at the point of the tangency of the profit staff expenditure curve which, with the highest possible managerial indifference curve. That is what is actually being given. That is the red line. So that is basically this particular person is want to, uh, you know, increase or uh, what is uh, the, the manager's uh, discretion or manager's interest is actually reflect that. You know, if I have more stuff so i feel very proud so in that sense not only really proud you know i maybe say that i'm actually something great in that sense so this is all works in the real world and equilibrium solution will always be in, in the falling section of profit at a minus staff expenditure curve and uh, in williamson's model the staff expenditure will be greater than that of the profit maximizing uh, model of the neoclassical thus williamson model implies a higher output lower price c Look at this in this case here lower profit output and a higher price whereas in the williamson model a higher output as well as with a lower price in that sense so uh, uh lower price and a lower level of profit that is the profit maximizing model that sense so it is not a profit maximization model any longer so here in the general model emoluments that is m is included that's the utility maximization function can be rewritten as you have a ux uh, you, 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 which is equal to function of SM, uh, SM uh, that is the earlier the staff expenditure and now the emolument, uh, the expenditure and uh, the uh, difference of the uh, revenue which is uh, reported one and the uh, the discretionary one. But the last equation obtained will be this case and uh, you have a U F of S and uh, one minus L uh, and R minus C minus S again you have a 1 minus t and r times rc r minus c minus s minus m uh, uh, minus you have a profit of uh, the original kind then you have an l which is actually nothing but the uh, reported profit by 
the actual profit in that sense so this is actually kind of a uh, parameter which we obtain and given t uh, by tax loss and uh, pi zero minimize minimum profit uh, demanded by the equity holders in that sense and the utility function will be so your pi zero is actually the kind of a profit which is a minimum profit which people you know a kind of a in order to run a firm you have to have at least this kind of a uh, kind of uh, you know uh, profitability and that is what has been represented always with the pi zero in that sense now once you have all these things this finally you will have a derivation which is do r by 2 x which is equal to do r by do c is obtained from which uh, it can be concluded that the firm makes its production decision in the conventional way by equating marginal production cost to marginal revenue in that sense so you have a do r by do s is less than one imply that the equilibrium firm will employ staff beyond optimum level in that sense so again this is also the uh, i mean uh, this is also goes beyond the, the traditional understanding that why uh, you are not actually maximizing only profit but at the same time in that context you know the price would be the maximum and the quantity would be limited in that sense but here what they say that is the when you compare with that uh, what you do is actually you increase the quantity along with you are reducing the price in that sense so there will be no slack payment to managers or discretionary investment if firm is a profit maximizer where both are positive in the williamson's model was what was being treated as one of its implication and the staff expenditure will be larger in williamson's model that is sw which is greater than the uh, pro max in that sense so uh, the profit maximization firm will spend on staff only up to the point where MC, is, uh, MC in staff which is equal to MR from staff while utility maximizing manager will employ staff beyond that. Now again the implicitly what they are trying to do in this particular model is that they are bringing the marginal list condition because what they believe is that actually the marginal list condition somewhere offer, o -o operates but not everywhere in price determination etc no, not necessarily but when you have some sort of a reservation as a uh, you know manager or as a owner of the thing in that uh, context so it is also typically bringing back the original idea for marginalism into the newer uh, alternative theory of firm though in a limited uh, fashion in that sense so although first order condition of equilibrium same as both model no definitional prediction can be drawn above the level of output in that form. so to sum up or the summary staff expenditure movement and discretionary investment will be larger for a firm that maximizes the utility than for a firm maximizing profit hence no general conclusion can be drawn regarding the level of output in this case now this model is not actually free from criticism in that sense. So, as I said, one of that is in the a, a few seconds ago. So the the model fails to describe how business take their price and output decision in a highly competitive setup, and the relationship between better performance of a manager and the increasing amount spent on managers' utility by the firm is not always true, and the model does not apply in a dynamic setup uh, like changing demand and cost condition during boom and recession to conclude uh, about this particular thing that is the, the model is uh, this model is applicable in market where rivalry is not strong so uh, for example in an oligopolistic market where there is some form of collusion or for firm uh, who uh, have some advantages over their rival uh, however in the long run such advantages which shelters a firm from competition are usually weakened and competition is enlarged when rivalry is strong this is not going to actually applicable in that case so um, uh, a profit maximizing model may be more appropriate and uh, some form of collusion agreement is achieved and firm adhered to it that is uh, one of the conclusion of this particular model and a smaller a slighter variant model of uh, behavioral kind also we can uh, discuss along with this model so let me go to the maris model that's it. so uh, let's look into the maris model that uh, the goal of the firm in this maris model is actually maximization of balance rate of growth of the firm so instead of managers interest in the williamson's case 
Maris what is Maris was trying to articulate that you know the growth of the firm is largely important than simply uh, the manager's uh, growth themselves. So it is actually self-centered of the manager. But at the same time, the firm's uh, growth is what is actually everybody's interest in that sense. So this is actually the kind of a shift which which Maris was trying to. Uh, basically, uh, you know, draw and big firms are managed by managers and uh, shareholders are the owners of this case and the managers aim at the growth of the firm rather than actually only, you know, maximizing their profits and the shareholders aims to maximize of their dividends in that sense. So it is not only really the manager's issue ego al alone because managers always try to you know, sizing up the firm and uh, I'm sorry, sizing up the uh, perks and emoluments, etc. As we said, but at the same time, manager, this is made possible if not only if the uh, firm get bigger. At the same time, the same is actually on the contrary, the owner's interest also. That is, if the uh, firms uh, works well, and then and then only they can actually it gets bigger and bigger. Then and then only they can get a better dividend in that sense. So. They also want to maximize their uh, dividend in that sense. At the same time, the managers want to maybe uh, improve their interest in that sense of uh, increased perks or emoluments, etc. Now, based on all this, uh, the, the theory also follows certain assumptions that it assumes a given price structure, production costs are hidden, there are uh, there is no oligopolistic interdependence, factor prices are constant. The third one is most important thing, and factor prices are constant, and firms are assumed to grow through diversification. And that's in all major variables such as profit, sales, costs are assumed to increase at the same rate in this case. So now once you are setting this assumption, then let's, let's explain the uh, theory. That is, the objective of the firm is to maximize its balance growth rate, that is G minus G. Uh, it, uh, that is, G itself depends on two factors, that is, uh, sorry, uh, not G minus G, it is G, and G is actually depends on two factors, that is, the rate of growth and uh, demand for the firm's product, that is, GD, the uh, rate of growth of uh, demand for the product, and the second one, rate of growth of capital supply, that is, yes. Thus, G, that is, the growth of the firm is actually dependent upon the growth of the demand and the growth of the supply in that sense. So, uh, accordingly, or uh, uh, there are two different or uh, utility function for managers and the owners in that sense. So, the utility of manager includes status, power, job, security, etc., etc., whatever. And at the same time, the owner's utility function is based on uh, profit per capital output, etc. So Maris analyzes that the firm try to achieve its growth maximization goal rather than simply you know the, letting the managers maximize their behavior in that sense. Now this is we have already seen in the principal agent. I mean oh, this is all the setting stage of the principal agent model and information asymmetry model. <coughs> sorry, in the 1960s and uh, sorry, 90, in the late 1960s and early 1970s uh, in that sense, the firm may grew uh, in size through the creation of new product which uh, creates new product markets and uh, Maris College differential diversification in that sense. So uh, uh, he also introduced or the introduction of new product depends on the rate of diversification, advertising expense, research and development expenditure etc. So all this is in fact in, in, uh, increases the cost of the firm and however this is increasing the, uh, naturally the profit will fall in that sense on the contrary at the same time the firm size will increase or the growth will happen and that will increase the dividend as well as the perks and other things of the other two elements in that uh, or uh, the, uh, the important players in the uh, firm itself. So the uh, the higher rate of the diversification requires higher expenditure on advertising and research and development in that sense. So as a result, beyond a certain growth rate of the higher education, higher growth rate leads to lower profitable profit rate in that sense. So this is another striking observation which Maris had and the main goal of the shareholder is to maximize, as we said, that the maximization of the growth rate of the capital stock and the main source of the finance for its growth is the profit itself. Thus, profit determines growth of the supply side. Uh, for the equilibrium, the growth of demand and the growth of the supply must be satisfied and satisfied in that context. 
So now, uh, once you have this thing, then the higher level of the profit uh, provides more funds directly for reinvestment and it also allows more funds to be raised on the capital market. And if the mark, uh, the manager adopt a higher retention ratio, then the distribution, distributed profit will fall further and shareholder will not uh, be satisfied with it, which will endanger the job security of managers the existing shareholders decide to replace manager if the distribution of low profit to shareholders bring a fall in the market price of shares. So it may lead to takeover of the firm ultimately. This is what has actually happens with this particular model. And according to Maris, this retention ratio, which determines the growth of the capital supply, and it is the ratio of the retained profit uh, to total profit. So. Uh, if the ratio is low, it means that almost all profit have been dis to, uh, distributed to the shareholders. Uh, but uh, this is uh, in fact uh, not uh, so realistic uh, for many uh, people. So this is also invited a lot of uh, criticism uh, 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 that is actually the market assumes a given price structure of the firm does not explain how prices the product are determined in the market itself. So this is very important and it ignores the problem of liquid listing interdependence of the firm as in the beginning it has been assumed in a non-collusive market case. So model does not analyze interdependence created by a non-price competition and the assumption that also are all major variables such as profit sales and cost increases at the same rate is highly unrealistic. And finally this model is on applicable to those firms which produce consumer good and the model is not appropriate uh, for analyzing the behavior of manufacturing business or traders in that sense. So uh, these are actually the kind of criticism against but uh, uh, I would like to make a humble uh, reminder that you know, when you talk about theory and all so simply going against the assumptions of the theory is not what is we are supposed to do as uh, Friedman said. So again I have reservation on simply but at the same time holding the theory and uh, if the, 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 the assumption is not or the theoretical proposition is not working then you can say that the theoretically this is incoherent in that sense or it's not sound in that sense but then that you know uh, the realistic and realistic discussion um, is actually having some limit however it's relevant and all. With this let me conclude the Altern alternative theories of firm uh, discussion and we will also one more uh, paper on uh, the Williams uh, sorry uh, Bomo's uh, sales revenue maximization which is already given it's a simple one how they are uh, maximizes their uh, profitability etc will be discussed later with this let me conclude today's uh, lecture so thank you for your patient listening and uh, you know um, uh, other things so let me uh, stop today thank you so much